Okay, welcome back. We're going to talk today about, we're going to keep talking about genetics. And I still can't figure out how to get everyone to be able to record these lectures or these presentations. So I don't know. I'm working on it. I will have something. So how do we know about uh, DNA? Well, in 1869, uh, this guy here, Dr. Uh, Frederick Nature, he isolated uh, some substance from the nucleus of white blood cells. Some sort of acidic substance from a nucleus. Ah, yes, nucleic acids. That's why they're called that. So, um, it's uh, important to note to note that like we don't remember Dr. Mischer, um, and it's he, despite he discovered one of the four. Uh, biological macromolecules, uh, very important. DNA, widely known as being very important. Um, uh, he was disabled, interestingly enough. Um, he actually lost most of his hearing after a uh, battle with typhoid fever at age 21. And four years later, he discovered DNA. Uh, so he was actually told, like, well, I don't know if medical school is right for you, buddy. You know, have you considered some sort of trade? But because you have to listen a lot for lectures, and he decided, no, he was going to go forward anyway and do it, and incredibly made this, or he made this incredible discovery. Uh, jumping forward to 1928, we're going to look at uh, Frederick Griffith, Frederick Griffith, a um, British man, he investigated how bacteria make people sick, Now, what happened here is that he had two, he was working with two different strains of, strains of uh, pneumonia. He had a rough strain and a smooth strain, right? Rough, smooth. Turns out the smooth strain was smooth because it had this coating on it that had this protein capsule. What the? My computer keeps doing this. All right, so it had this protein capsule surrounding it, which allows it to evade the uh, detection system, uh, avoid the detection of the immune system. So basically what happened was the rough strain uh, doesn't kill mice, the smooth strain does. But when you heat either of these, neither uh, kill the mice either. But when you combine the rough strain with the heat killed smooth strain, what happens when you kill the, uh, when you heat up the uh, bacteria is that they lice, they burst open. And in that process, they release a bunch of DNA, and then the rough strain is able to take that up and use it to uh, show, use uh, use that DNA and they allowed them to make the protein capsule. Protein capsule. So here we have the, what happens here, uh, the colors are swapped, the red and blue is swapped in this slide weirdly. So we have the uh, the smooth strain and the rough strain. When, um, when we combine these, basically the DNA from the uh, smooth strain goes into the rough strain and it allows the rough strain to become uh, lethal. Next up is uh, Hershey and Chase. This is 1952. They uh, sought to determine if genes were made of protein or DNA. They did this by labeling different parts of a virus. Uh, viruses are, or at least these type of viruses, are only made up of um, uh, protein and nucleic acids. Um, something like coronavirus actually has lipids. It has a, a, a lipid envelope in it, or on it. But the um, this bac uh, bacteria page, this bacteria, uh, this virus that infects bacteria, uh, only has DNA and protein. And so these uh, people, these researchers had, um, of which only one of them won the Nobel Prize. Um, uh, Martha Chase was pushed out, of, basically shunted out, out of, uh, shouldered out of academia, and died in two thousand three, um, with us. Um, very sad case of a uh, dementia, and this wonderful st or this tragic story of a wonderful scientist who never really got to keep doing what she, or never end end up being able to to work to her the best of her ability. So they knew that vir they knew that uh, lipids and they knew that carbohydrates would weren't the uh, genetic material of life, and. They also knew that viruses can't reproduce autonomously. They also knew that they injected genes into the bacteria. They knew they know this because the bacteria, or the yeah, the bacteria start acting differently. 
and therefore the genes must have been inserted into them. So because cells just don't start making viruses on their own uh, out of nowhere. So what they did was they had they ran the same experiment uh, side by side. The same thing's going to happen on both sides, but in one case they've labeled the uh, protein, and on the other they've labeled the DNA. Uh, either with heavy phosphorus, radio-labeled uh, phosphorus, or sulfur, because there's no phosphorus in, in proteins and there's no sulfur in DNA. This allows them to track uh, either through uh, radio, uh, through uh, using a Geiger counter, and at the end they're able to separate by centrifugation, they're able to separate the bacteria from the uh, protein capsule. And what they find is that there's no uh, radiation inside. There's no radio radioactive signal inside of the cells when they labeled the the uh, protein. But when they labeled the DNA, again, the same thing happens here on, on either side. But what happens here is that the, the radio label ends up inside of the cell, showing that DNA must have been, uh, must be the, the thing that genes are made out of. I'd say it's sort of really groundbreaking and really elegant experiment. Um, last up, um, we'll just go through this real quick. The first model of DNA was made in 1953 using data from uh, stolen from Rosalind Franklin uh, by two, by Watson, James Watson and Francis Crick. Um, James Watson, famously like virulently racist um, and a uh, misogynistic man. He's a real piece of shit. Um, Rosalind Franklin has notes in her, or had notes in her notebook that basically look like this. She had something that looked like this in her notebook. Basically, what the hell? It keeps doing this. Basically showing that she had come up with the, uh, she had determined what the structure of the DNA, uh, uh, what the structure of DNA was. I'll put a, a link to something else as well. Another video, to, a short video to watch on this. I've got videos on all these uh, these different experiments. So DNA, uh, it's a double helix. Again, it's made up of anti-parallel strands of DNA. Here we have a right-handed uh, helix. We can see that there's a ma major groove and a minor groove. And in, uh, the first model was made in 1953 uh, using data that was literally stolen off her desk. Um, so Rosalind Franklin uh, worked in X-ray crystallography, which is still cutting-edge work. Um, it is still incredibly difficult. Um, my lectures on X-ray crystallography literally gave me a migraine. It is some of the most complicated and absurd stuff I've ever seen in my life. I don't know how, how anyone came up with it. But she's doing this in 1953, and it, was taking, it takes a long time to do this sort of work. Um, and I'll, I'll make sure, I'll throw the other thing on the... Uh, I'll throw the link in the description of this video as well as on the canvas. Um, but basically they used, uh, you can see here we have these, here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So those uh, ten rungs there, uh, that showed her that there were ten nucleotides in every revolution, every full circle of DNA. That tells us there each nucleotide, each uh, nitrogen space, each nucleotide is offset by 36 degrees relative to the ones above and below it. And there are 10 in a, a full revolution. This was groundbreaking work. Um, and she had the Nobel Prize stolen out from under her. Uh, they also used Chargaff's rule, which has, uh, has to do with how much the... Uh, with the uh, urban Chargaff, noticed that the um, that G guanine and cytosine was were always present in the strand of DNA at the same ratio, and uh, adenine thymine were always present in the same ratio. So this showed them that there must be a connection between the two. Um, we can also see here that adenine and thymine are connected uh, more or connected less strongly or more weakly than uh, G and C. So if you if we had a strand of DNA that was just guanine uh, guanine and cytosine, it would have a higher uh, denaturation te temperature. Uh, that is to say, it would take more energy, more heat to separate the two strands than if it was made up of purely adenine thymine. And in fact, we can calculate the exact uh, uh, melting point, the exact uh, temperature at which the two 
strains of DNA are going to separate. And that's it for today. Um, I, well, it's not it, it for today because you should watch the uh, the second video on um, uh, Rosalind Franklin. But here's the quiz. And I hope everyone's staying safe. Have a good one.